Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his name, now and Almighty God, to you all <laughs> hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the prophet Hosea, beginning at the second verse, chapter 1. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom, and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Diblam, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the vow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter, then the Lord said to him, Name her Lo Ruhamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lo Ruhamah, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Lo-Ami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. The word of the Lord. Let's join together in praying Psalm 85 as it appears on page 4 of our bulletins. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. 
Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen, O Lord God, to what you are saying, for you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord, you will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians, beginning at the 6th verse, chapter 2. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with the growth that is from God. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If then you, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Three-star Michelin chef Anthony Bourdain created dishes that brought people together. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, he said. Barbecue may not be the road to world peace, but it's a start. He published his recipes so his disciples could enjoy his creations, and he also shared insights into the nature of good food and good eating. In an essay in the New Yorker entitled, Don't Eat Before Reading This, he shared his wisdom. A word of caution for vegans, vegetarians, and the faint of heart. You might want to plug your ears. It's a little graphic. Good food, good eating, is all about blood and organs, cruelty and decay. It's about sodium loaded pork fat, stinky triple che cream cheeses, and the tender thymus glands and distended livers of young animals. It's about danger, risking the dark bacterial forces of beef chicken, cheese, and shellfish. Gastronomy is the science of pain. There is, of course, much truth to this. There is darkness in gastronomy as well as light, pleasure as well as pain. Art imitates life, after all. As I read today's gospel passage in Luke 
and meditated on it. When the, gospel, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, I wondered, what kind of answer were they expecting? Were they hoping for a recipe, a simple formula for prayer? Or were they hoping for profound insights into Jesus' relationship with God? Jesus did not respond with an enigmatic parable, as he often did, and then send his disciples off to figure out how to pray on their own. He did not share profound insights, like being a disciple is all about blood and organs, cruelty and decay, danger and risking the dark forces, and that the grace and peace of being one with God in prayer would help them transcend pain. Instead, Jesus gave them concrete instructions, a model recipe. Two different versions of the Lord, Lord's Prayer appear in the Gospel. Matthew's version is closer to the one we use in almost every rite in the Book of Common Prayer. Our version from the Gospel reading today, from Luke, is simpler, and it feels well-suited for private, personal prayer. It begins with one word, Father. And for me, it's easier to imagine one person saying Father than a group. So Luke's version seems more private and individual. In The Cost of Discipleship, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote that, the true, that true prayer does not depend either on the individual or the, on the whole body of the faithful, but solely upon the knowledge that our Heavenly Father knows our needs. Jesus calls to a divine Father who is faithful, who knows our true selves, our essential needs. By teaching them to call God Father, he is telling the disciples that they are all God's children. Next comes praise, hallowed be your name. In the Hebrew tradition, God's name is so pure and holy it is not spoken. The name is represented almost symbolically by four Hebrew consonants, yud Vavhe. vav he. In the Jewish faith to this day, the Hebrew word for my Lord, Adonai, is substituted. Jesus and the disciples were indeed bold to call God by name, especially a familial name, Father. After the call and praising of God's name, Jesus invites God's kingdom into the, this world, but God the Father stays away, apart. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew adds the lines to make this clear. Our Father who art in heaven, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, two separate places. Setting God apart makes us less likely to project our ideas of human fatherhood onto God. God will not fix our problems or revise a master plan after hearing our prayers. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. Isaiah 55, 9. Bonhoeffer added that accepting that God knows what we need makes God the sole object of our prayers and frees us from a false confidence in our own prayerful eff efforts. Our Divine Father knows us, hears us, sees us, and loves us. When God's kingdom comes, earth becomes a place of love, a sanctuary in which we find our own way through whatever challenges face us. In the meantime, prayer creates space and time in our lives, an environment in which we may listen, listen for and come to know God's will. Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer begins with two divine petitions. May God's name be holy and may God's kingdom come. Matthew adds a third, 
may God's will be done. Three human petitions follow. Jesus tells the disciples that they may pray for food for the journey, forgiveness, for, forgiveness of sins, and to be saved from temptation. Bonhoeffer wrote that the essence of Christian prayer was definite, concrete petition, not adoration. The right way to approach God is to stretch out our hands and ask of one who we know has the heart of a father. The first human petition is, give us this day our daily bread. Earlier this month, we read in Luke chapter 10 that Jesus instructed his disciples to carry no bag, no purse, no food along the journey, so they depended on the hospitality of strangers. They asked God for what was essential and necessary for survival and salvation. Remember, their names were written, are written in heaven because of their ministry. They prayed for bread every, every day. In the second human petition, Jesus taught the disciples to pray for their sins to be forgiven. Sins in Greek is hamartia, or missing the mark. Matthew's version uses a different Greek word, ophelema, or debts, which metaphorically means moral debt. Luke's use of the word sins suggests that Jesus is asking them to forgive all debts. They should forgive anyone who owes them anything. Money, a sense of security, peace of mind, good health. I wrestled with this part, to be honest, because I've asked God to forgive my sins about a thousand times, it seems but I'm not sure I ever tried to meet this condition. I'm sure I never forgave everyone who was indebted to me before I prayed for forgiveness. So perhaps I'm only partially forgiven and have some work left to do. The third human petition is easier to interpret and to pray. Jesus taught them to pray not to be brought to the time of trial. These would be times of temptation, like Jesus endured in the desert, or it could be any time of loss or suffering. Luke does not include the line in Matthew that the disciples be delivered from evil. Two short lessons follow this simple model prayer. First, Jesus reminds us to be persistent, not to stop asking for what we need, either for ourselves or to meet our obligations to our friends. Keep knocking, seeking, asking. Eventually, God will answer. How often do we pray once or twice for things we need and then give up? The last verses seem to appeal to the disciples' experiences as parents and children. Is there one among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The message is clear. God will not trick us or intentionally hurt us. God knows what we need and will provide. Our Heavenly Father is compassionate and endlessly loving. In the narrative arc of Luke's Gospel, the Lord's Prayer comes in the middle of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. Jesus would die there, rise from the dead, and be taken to heaven that he had work to do before that time. He sent his disciples into the world to perform miracles and exorcisms, all signs that God's kingdom was coming near. Jesus taught his disciples how to ask for everything they would need, bread to fuel them, for their sins and debts to be forgiven, for a clear conscience, and to be spared from temptation. In a few minutes, we will receive bread in Holy Communion 
and we'll recite the Lord's Prayer together. When we walk out the, these doors, we will have been fed, forgiven to the degree that we have forgiven others, and protected from dangers and dark forces in the world. I invite you to recite Luke's simple version of the Lord's Prayer each morning, reflecting on each verse, calling on the Holy Spirit to fortify your soul for the day ahead. And keep asking, keep searching, keep knocking, don't give up. Amen. Standing, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers for the people this morning are found on page 6 of our bulletins. With the Lord's encouraging words still sounding in our ears, let us frame again the prayers which linger in all human hearts, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We are weary of war and threats of war. Let us pray for peace in our world, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We fear for our children. Let us pray for all children, their health and well-being, saying, we are anxious about our security. Let us pray for an end to hunger and want, saying, We pray for those who have died, that they may now know fully even as they are fully known, to rest this day in peace and rise in glory, saying, We yearn for faith in an uncertain world. Let us pray for all who preach the gospel, saying, We tremble at our own vulnerability. Let us pray for the victims of illness, accident, and disaster, especially Mark, Kevin, Thomas, Donna, Patty, Willie, Diana, Michael, Kathy, Kim, Chris, Howard, Marsha, Julie, Jeff, Bill, Tonya, Christy, Mike, Sharon, Joanne, Reen, Sophia, Sharon, Dan, Yvonne, Ed, Teddy, Tara, and those we now name, saying, We carry worry in our hearts. 
Let us pray for the needs we can hardly bear to name, saying, Loving God, our Father, you fashioned the human heart. You know the needs that make it ache. Hear us, your children, praying as your Son taught us. His is the name we invoke. His is the kingdom we await. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. We are delighted to see you here this morning, especially if this is your first Sunday with us at St. Thomas. We invite everyone to stick around for a few minutes after the service in the portico right outside for coffee and some snacks that we might get to know one another better. We have a bunch of announcements and dates for you to remember or write down. Uh, this week and all of these are in the draft and in the bulletin as well as on our website But just a few things to keep in mind as we look ahead to the next couple of weeks Summer choir is back again next week and you are welcome to join it All you have to do is show up here at 915 Practice the music with the choir and then you sing during the service you don't have to come during the week for practice during the summer choir. So this is your chance to stretch your musical wings, if you will. So if you're interested in that, please join us at 9.15 before worship on Sundays. On Wednesday night, we have our supper song and prayer, which is at 6 o'clock in the evening. In the summer, we're, we're doing without the song, but we are gathering for supper and prayer. All are welcome to come. It is a potluck dinner. You can bring something to share, hot or cold. You can bring a beverage or something to eat. It doesn't matter. Whatever you wish to bring to share. That is typically also preceded at 515 in our chapel by Holy Eucharist. And so there's just a variety of things that you can do on Wednesday night to come and gather as community. In a couple of Wednesdays, though, we are not going to do either of those things, because on Wednesday, August 24th, we will be ordaining Anne Hartley to the Sacred Order of Priests. The bishop will be with us that night for a big celebration. We'll have the ordination at 7 p.m. with a lovely reception to follow, and all are invited to attend. And I see that we have an announcement uh, about our high tea prepared, so I'll turn it over to Russ for that. Good morning, St. Thomas, and top of the morning to you all. <laughs> uh, no, the circus is not coming to town yet, uh, but I do want to remind you to please mark your calendars for Sunday, August the 21st. 
We'll be having our annual high tea for the parish, and it will begin at 3.30 and go to 5. There will be um, hat-making activities for any children that attend, I'm, I understand. I think so. And we invite you all to wear your hats to this event. There's sign-ups for um, if you're going to plan to attend out in the coffee area afterwards. We'd like to get a general idea on how many people are going to attend. We also need folks to help provide uh, finger foods and cookies for that event, and there's a sign-up for that. And we're looking for anybody that's interested in helping set up on Saturday the 20th at 9 a.m. here, and anybody that's interested in helping clean up after the event, there are sign-ups for all of that. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Russ. And Anne has a couple of announcements as well. I do. Um, on the same table with the sign-up sheets for the tea is a birthday card for Tecla Christ, who's turning 104 on August 4th. If you, she hasn't been here in a while. She hasn't been here in a while, but her husband John Christ was a guest treasurer. He was very, he was a, one of the one of the church leaders. So, um, so uh, please please sign her card on your way out. Um, in two weeks, two Sundays from now, we'll have a service where we bless students and their backpacks and also teachers or any school staff. So if you have friends, this is a great week to invite uh, your, your educator friends to come and be blessed. On the same day during coffee hour, we're gonna have a meeting for anybody who is remotely interested in youth ministry. It might be that you might consider just chaperoning at a movie night or movie afternoon. We're going to have our uh, movie uh, event on the Saturday the 13th at 3.30 to 6.30. We'll watch The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Did I get that right? I'm blanking out all of a sudden. The Narnia, the first Narnia book. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so, so if you'd like to chaperone for that, um, there's also lots of things to be done for the pet fair in early October. Um, so just look through the dates and the events on, in the draft notices and pray on it, see what you'd like to do, and let me know because we'd love to get as many people involved as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. One more date to keep in mind, September the 2nd, the Tampa Bay Rays will take on the New York Yankees. What's important about that particular date? It's baseball with the bishop, or in this case, baseball with two bishops. So this is our Episcopal night in the Diocese of Southwest Florida at the Rays game. If you would like to go, we're gonna to try to buy tickets as a block. So if you would like to go, please get your ticket orders into Grace in the church office by August 12th, and that way we will be able to buy a block of tickets. The game is September the 2nd, though. Uh, you probably received in your email this week a survey about life and worship here at St. Thomas. This is part of our Invite Welcome Connect ministry. If you received that survey a month ago, it's because you were a part of the leadership group that got it early. You don't have to fill it out again. It's the same survey. If you haven't filled it out, do set aside about 15 minutes of your day to give us some honest feedback on our worship and on all of our activities here at St. Thomas so that we can prepare to invite, welcome, and connect new members in the upcoming year. Lastly, uh, what I'd like to say, is, oh, one more thing. Uh, to go with our art exhibit, Hearts, uh, Heads, Faces, and Spiritual Encounter, there are new guidebooks in the back for that art exhibit. We ask that after you use the guidebook that you replace it in the basket because there's not enough of them for everybody to just take one. If you wish to purchase one, we'll be happy to sell it to you for the cost that it is to us, which is five bucks. Uh, but if you're just going to use it as you walk around, please do replace it in the basket. Now, lastly, what I'd like to say is I will be uh, having an interest meeting for a new intercessory prayer and devotion group. So if you are interested in deepening your prayer life, deepening your spiritual life, and want to help this church pray for others, you can join me on August 14th, which is Sunday morning, 
uh, in the guild room in between the services. So from about 9.10 to 9.40, and I'll be telling you all about it. I wrote a little bit about this in the draft this week. I'm going to say a little bit more about it next week as well. So look for that, and if you're interested, if you can't make that day, that's fine. Just speak to me, and I'll be happy to bring you up to speed. Are there any other announcements we need to make today? Wonderful. Offer to God the sacrifice, do his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give the blessing, it's always good to have Father Randy Herr here, guest organist for these last couple of weeks, and it's especially good to have Lowell Adams, our cellist, here. Let's put our hands together and thank him. A blessing to you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 